got a little bit of a problem here. Uh, looks like the steering head on this 1955 Pook has uh, got some pretty bad races. I took all the steel balls out and uh, you can see in this area here where there's little lines and you can feel them in the raceway worn in there by those balls probably caused by corrosion and stuff. The grease is very hard probably not working at all. I mean it this, this steering head really needs repacked with grease. It's, it's really bad. Uh, probably going to have to knock that race out of there. Uh, maybe I can put it in a lathe and stone it up, but I'm hoping I can get new, uh, new races for it from uh, maybe Motor West would have them. But uh, that's the bad news there anyway. Uh, to get the uh, fork legs out of the triple clamp here, I use an old screwdriver that I have here and drive it, you know, into this slot right here with a hammer to, to spread it a little bit. And I still had some trouble getting the fork leg to slide out of there. Uh, this uh, triple clamp had some rust and the fork leg had some rust just a little bit pretty mild rust but it was enough to lock it on there so I soaked it in a little bit of penetrant and uh, was able to use a big rubber hammer to to drive the fork leg out of there so that's where I stand on that here's another one of those bad raceways there that kind of stuff's going to have to be fixed I think Now to disassemble the insides of this fork leg, get the spring out of there and the uh, shock absorber mechanism. There's a screw here in the bottom of the fork leg. After you take the wheel axle out, you see that screw in there. You just go in there with a socket. Uh, I think it's 11 millimeter screw. You loosen it maybe two, three turns and then strike it with a a punch, the, just the head of the screw. Don't take the screw all the way out, don't run it up to the ends of the threads. I just have to loosen it just a few turns and then and then hit it with a punch because the, the guts to the shock absorber are in there on a taper. And I'll show you what that looks like. I need to get these chrome sleeves off here to get them replated. Uh, they're just threaded onto the lower fork leg and the threads are up in this area here. Uh, you can use a strap wrench around here. You might not be able to turn it with your hands, but I took a, just a, a little punch, a brass punch and a hammer and hit on this one ear right here. They, they sell a tool, it's, it's a spanner tool that goes across between ears to get this loose. But since I don't have the tool, I just tapped on it a little bit with a hammer until I saw it start to move. And then you can see here that I can unscrew it. Which, by the way, when you do all this stuff, don't do it on a floor that you want to keep real clean because there's going to be oil coming out. Taking apart forks is always a pretty oily, messy job. And I don't think I ever took one apart that I didn't make some kind of mess. But... It's a real fine thread in this sleeve, but I want to put it in some acid and try to strip some of this chrome off here and polish it a little bit in the lathe before I take it down to the platers. I got to get that cleaned up. But uh, there now you see the the threads and the lower fork leg here, and here you see the original color of the bike, what it was originally. You can see that it looks kind of orange on the video but it's really kind of a deep dark red it's, they call it maroon is what that's supposed to be but uh, if you look at this oil and you see the little bubbles in there that's water somehow water got in that fork and uh, and that's not good and it didn't have much oil in and what oil's in there is really thick stuff so it's probably been in there since 1955 people never change their fork leg oil and they should this right here, there's a little drain screw. Most forks got a drain to drain the oil out. 
and that should be done every once in a while to change it, put fresh oil in there. Okay, I got the, pulled the fork tube out of the uh, down tube, or took the, I'll say the slider tube off of there. That's the part where your wheel goes. I got, I was holding it in a vise up there so I could make a video of this, but uh, this is what's inside. You've, you've got a bushing here that everything slides in. That's, it slides real nice. I, I think it's, it's nice. They say you can have uh, one millimeter play in there, which would be 40 thousandths. That's a lot, and that, that fits closer than that. But you'll see here the reason why you need that little uh, bolt and the nut. Let me get the, the bolt here. This little bolt is what's screwed into the end here. And that's why when you loosen it, I'm gonna screw it back in there again. You just loosen it a few turns and it's inside that fork leg, that slider. And when you hit this with a hammer, it drives this taper. You can see there's a little bit of a taper on there. I hope you can see it. Maybe not. But, but there's a taper on the end of this. And when you smack that thing, it takes, it knocks this inner shaft loose out of the, out of the, the slider, out of the lower fork leg. That comes out of there and allows you to withdraw the spring and, and the shock absorber mechanism. I'll show you what that looks like. Now, this is what's inside the fork, the fork tube, and this this piece here is moving up and down with the slider, the, the lower part of the fork that moves up and down with the wheel. This is a piece that's in with that, and it's fit with that taper on the end of there. This is this is the taper. And that's what you're knocking loose. And this whole piece will come out of here with the spring and everything. And of course the spring just unwinds and comes off of each end there. You can take the spring loose pretty easy. There's a little rubber bumper or plug in here. I'm not quite sure what that's for. Uh, maybe if the forks bottom out that hits, I don't know. It's inside the spring. And I'm not quite sure what its purpose is, but after you take one apart and analyze it, you probably figure out how it works. But. Uh, knowing exactly how everything works isn't quite necessary just as long as it's put together correctly and you got the right amount of oil in there and there's nothing wore out. Well, I've uh, run into a little bit of a problem here. I've been able to uh, disassemble everything. I was finally able to get the, uh, the spring and the uh, mechanism for the shock absorber out of the inside of the tube. Uh, however, there's a bend in this fork tube. Uh, the bend's right about here, uh, right where it was in the triple clamp, I suppose. And uh, because of that, I cannot withdraw this tube out of here. Uh, it won't come out of that triple clamp. Uh, might be able to bend things back straight again, uh, but I'd kind of like to get it out of there to get it really straight. I I don't know. I I found I have another set of forks here come off of a, an old uh, Pook 250 that uh, I bought out of a junkyard and it might be they're going to come in handy because I might need those fork tubes. It has a different uh, mechanism there for the fork legs. These have rubber boots on there uh, instead of this chrome piece. Uh, which is actually the seal, you know, the seals in, in this end of this thing. And uh, I'd kind of like to maybe see if the tubes in here aren't exactly the same and maybe they could be uh, used in here. Obviously they're pretty rusty and stuff, but if I can get this set of forks apart, it might solve a lot of problems and it gets rid of one problem, the, the uh, uh, steering head bearing the the one race that's on here don't look too bad even though things are a little rusty there but it certainly looks better than the one off of the 55 so eh, I might just go ahead and change it I mean you know everything can be painted and stuff the color I want and 
uh, I can't really see a problem with that. At least, at least I'm going to look right now. I, I think the only way I'm going to get this out of here is to saw this. I'm going to have to cut this off uh, right about in here to be to be able to withdraw this leg out because this this thing has a bend in it enough and it's a sharp enough bend here that it won't go through that triple clamp. Okay. I take back what I was saying before. Uh, I think maybe I am going to get this tube out of there. It's got a heck of a bend in it, but I figured a way to spread this uh, triple clamp a little bit, open a little bit more, probably going to be just a few thousandths more, but where I would wedge a screwdriver in, which is how I've always done it before, either with a screwdriver, in this case it's just an old beat up plastic handle screwdriver that I pound down in the slot and the taper on the screwdriver is usually enough to spread enough to give me enough room to slide the tube out. So I got to thinking well maybe I can spread it a little bit more if I drive the screwdriver in there on the taper you know down in that slot and then put this screw in there. The screw's going in where the the normal clamp screw is it's the pinch bolt for the triple clamp and uh, of course the back side of it here is threaded and uh, so I put a, a, a screw in there it's a little bit of a funny color in this thing but anyways I put that screw in there uh, and it's pushing against the blade of the screwdriver which covers the hole uh, that way I can put pressure with the screw thread to try to pry that slot open uh, by pushing on this with this screw by tightening this screw up here and that seems to be working pretty well. I'm being kind of careful because I might end up breaking a triple clamp but uh, so far it's going pretty well and I can see I'm making some progress now on this tube. It's it's going through there a lot further than it was so might be I just got to get it twisted or hold my tongue just right but I'm striking it here with a rubber hammer and kind of pulling on it on the other end and it seems like it's going through there. So things are looking up. Well, pretty thrilled. I got this thing out uh, right here. When you when you feel that tube, you can tell it's it's all egg shaped and it's it's kind of mangled up right there, pretty bad. And uh, my problem, of course, is to get this bushing off there which like I say they say you can have up to 40 thousands clearance in there which ought to be plenty but it's still it, it don't fit very tight on that tube but it it won't slide over that spot so it's it's too egg shaped and and just too mangled from being bent there somebody tried to straighten them out but the tube will go egg shape when you do that so I think since I can't get this bushing off I'm going to put it in the lathe down there and either file or just polish this area until I get it polished down enough, take the high spots off of it enough that I can slide this bushing off. But I kind of think this tube shot. It's not something I would use or try to straighten because they've got it egg shaped on there. Which gave me a hard time getting a spring out from inside too. That was another thing. And then they kind of mangled it up on the end. And uh, try to straighten this out here. This tube's bent in this area here and uh, whenever you bend a tube it, it goes egg shaped. It's, it doesn't stay around. It, it, the process of bending makes it go kind of oval on you and that's probably what gave me such a hard time getting this out of the triple clamps and uh, always giving me a hard time of pulling that the, the center part that goes up and down the shock absorber part out there because that the hole inside is bent also. So uh, where the triple clamps were here, this part's straight. This is the part that got bent back, all this of course. And uh, I can't get this this little bushing, it won't slide off here. So I'm gonna try to polish this down. Which by polishing it, I probably could take all oh, two or three thousand off there maybe a minute or so of uh, polishing it. If this don't work, I'll have to use a coarser uh, polishing paper. But this may get, get it good enough to 
where I can get it off there. I don't want to see. Put the newspaper on the lathe so it, the grit that comes off here doesn't get on the waste. I mean, you can do it without newspaper, but you have to make real sure you, you clean those waves real good. Otherwise, the grit, the grit will get on and wear out. So. Boy, it's really, really bad in this area. It must have been really bit bad. I think, I think they bent the forks, and somehow they managed to pull them back straight. I think they did that. Ah, there we go. I got it. Great. Uh, they pulled them back straight. I mean, I can, I can feel a lot of, oh, divots and bends in here. It's just. This is where they, you know, it went, it went egg-shaped, and when you, when you rub it and feel it, you can feel all kinds of ripples in that there. So this is the part that isn't good on this one. Uh, I could, you know, heat it with a torch or something and, and bend it and get it straight, or at least a lot straighter than it is now. But I think I'm going to see if I can't find some other uh, fork tubes that are straighter. So that's... That's how that came out. That's how I got that thing off there.